this live martial arts class, you'll discover the best weapon for street fight self-defense. In this case, it's the Japanese or Okinawan tanfa. And I like to warm up in the morning with these tanfa because it gets the blood flowing. You start to move faster. I have to spin like I do a lot of the other weapons. But the reason this is one of the best weapons for street fight self-defense is because it puts all your power right here in the tip when you strike. So you're holding this handle. If someone tries to break your arm and they're swinging a baseball bat, you've got that block. You've got the block inside, the block down. And then when you strike, all that energy, all that force is coming from right here. So we're gonna warm up together, spinning this way. And if you don't have tanfa yet, you can pretend, right? Or just use this as an informational video. This is what I do a lot of times when I come in in the morning and I'm a little early. I like to get the blood flowing. I like to use a weapon that's a little bit different than the ones I normally use because it gets me out of my comfort zone, forcing me to grow. Now, when you hold the tanfa, you're gonna hold your hand closed. The first two fingers stay firmly closed so that the tanfa doesn't fly out of your hand. This little knob here, which also can be used to jab. You can jab in this way, straight up. It's extremely hard. It's very forceful. This side here, that does the most damage. You can twist, forcing it out, creating more distance between you and the threat. So you warm up nice and easy, spinning across the body, kind of like a nunchuck, but very different because you're holding it on uh, the uh, police force. We call it the side handle baton, the PR24 made by Monadnock. And it was just this hard, I've got one over there that I kept when I was a policeman in the Marine Corps. We use those and you carry that. And I actually, I actually went and I got certified on how to teach it after a while. Most guys just used it like a billy club. There's another use for that, right? Strike, joint lock, take somebody's legs out. It's very effective. Carrying these on the street might not be legal where you live, but they're legal here. They're legal in a lot of places. Throw them in a backpack. Someone pulls out a knife, you pull these out. You block, and again, striking hard. So the warm up here and then up. Just kind of bringing them up. And that's another strike there. This swinging strike, if I hit the bag, it's a force multiplier. Bringing it across that way, it's a little bit. Turning the hips, twisting, it's very powerful. That could be the midsection, bring it up to the face, and then bringing it up this way. Think of this tip right here, breaking the jaw, hitting them right under the chin. From here, straight up this way. Again, very effective. Maybe they've got something in their hand, they're trying to hit you, and you smack it up, swinging it this way. So the warm up now, across the body and up, and then back into the chambered position, across and up. Oh, I reversed it. There we go, so I'm coming up and across. But I'm showing you this in the morning before I get started with all the other videos. I hope to make a couple of different training videos for you today. But I wanna show you how I like to get my blood flowing and get my brain firing, because I don't do this every single day, but I try to do this at least once a week so I can stay familiar with it, but also so I can get out of my comfort zone and force myself to grow. After you've done this basic swinging, and there are lots of ways to swing, you can pop it here, pop it down, from here, pop it out, pop it down, Top of the head, right from here, right on top of the head. You can see very easily, and this is made out of some kind of hardwood. If I were to guess, I would say white oak, stained. And I've had these for 20 years. I do push-ups on them like that. Get on the ground, push-ups on that handle. They still haven't broken under my weight and force. And um, striking, right? The speed bag right there. Striking, just like any other weapon, switch it. Striking, those basic strikes you learn with the Screamer Kali sticks, with the uh, Japanese Tanfa, with Okinawa Tanfa. But let me show you my favorite thing. Once you've done all that swinging and warm up, 
and maybe you did that second one I showed you, then you get in a good, deep horse riding stance. Horse riding stance, just picture you're riding on a horse. And most people don't know this about stances. I don't know why. Uh, a lot of schools don't teach it anymore. But when you're gripping the floor with your feet, that means you're going down and you're pushing, trying to push your feet apart. Whether it's that horse riding stance or the front stance, the back stance in traditional karate or taekwondo or tangsudo, whatever your style is, you're pushing down and also trying to separate your feet. You won't because you're standing on the ground. It's under your weight. But by doing that, by pushing your feet apart, and I know you can't see it directly in this video right now. I'll show you on a later one. But by pushing your feet apart, you're firing all those muscles in your body and you're getting a solid, stronger stance. If you get in that horse stance, some comes push up, uh, hits you in the body and you fall down or any of the stances, it's probably because you don't know about putting all the weight and trying to separate the feet. That's the front stance. You're pushing the front foot toward, the back foot away from you. And you'll feel, try it try right now. You try that, yeah, all those muscles start, there's a good way to warm up in the morning. All right, so horse riding stance, striking and pulling. Strike, just think about self-defense, street fight self-defense, situational awareness, what's happening around me? Maybe you need to pop them out. They were in your backpack, that's why we did that. Pop them out. Now, you see the threat. Get in a better position. High block, right? Low block, wrist block. Simply defending yourself with these, getting that flinch block. Now, instead of them getting your skin and your bones and breaking everything, they run into that. Block it and then strike. What are your targets? Breath, self-defense breath. Think about it. You're gonna hit them here. You're gonna hit them here. You're gonna crush that uh, right under that hard bony sternum, <clears throat> uh, solar plexus. Hit that uh, big group of nerves. All of a sudden they can't breathe. On all your force, maybe they're a bigger person, but you have this power generated here from your body Force multiplier, let them be a bigger person, let them be younger, faster, stronger, and you strike with the end. But watch this, I can strike up, I can strike middle, I can strike straight down, add a block and a strike, block, strike, block, strike, block, strike, cross hard, and then go into a high strike with all those blocks, upper, middle, Straight down, straight down like you would if you had nothing in your hands, just a low block. And then swinging this thing halfway. Hit them with this side now. Hit them one, pull it in, practice here. One, in, two. Now you've created distance. The first one is gonna knock them back a little, especially if you hit them here, <clears throat> back here, and then quickly, boom. You hit them with the other one. Those are your basics with this simple weapon, the Japanese or Okinawa Tafa. It's a great street fight self-defense weapon. If it's legal where you are, again, you got that tucked into your backpack. Uh, which one of the Ninja Turtles carried it? <laughs> I don't remember. I wasn't like a huge Ninja Turtle fan. I've seen it, but I know that they carry the weapons that I'm a big fan of. They've got these, whip them out. You're able to defend yourself Against the bigger opponent, defend yourself. One strike knockout punch. With here, you might not have enough power yet. Here, but here, <laughs> that might be all you need. Maybe you just bring them out and start whipping them around, and they think, I don't want any part of that, right? Looks like you know what you're doing. But remember this whatever it is, yeah, maybe Donatello, I don't know. Um, commitment, full force. So then when you practice, you get in that horse riding stance hard as you can, as hard as you can, boom. And then that second one, out and out. One, two, one, two. And then later in your practice, turn them around. Practice, you already know this one, right? If you, know, if you don't know it, go watch one of my Kali videos. Practice this. Striking here, turning, turning. Then go back to here. Practice the new one. Pop it, turn it. It's just like this. Elbow goes straight. That part is gonna, that's a strike. 
hit them, and then hit them on the other side. Practice that. One, two. But the point is practice with commitment. Like you really mean it. You really need to defend yourself with these. Go all in. Practice your blocks. If you need to, get in those traditional stances. Uh, back stance, front stance. Back stance, front stance. Back stance. Practice shifting your weight so that when you need to, you can defend yourself. You're not going to fight in a stance for street fight self-defense. Weapon, tanfa, but you might want to practice that way. Remember to grip the floor with your feet so you get super duper strong. All right, I got to go get the kids ready for their virtual online learning for their class. I'm going to make another one of these when we're done with that. I've also got a private lesson in a little bit virtually through the portal. I'd love to work with you if you want to do that. Reach out to me, let me know. Um, come back today. We're doing some Kali. We're doing that bow staff. But I wanted you to see something a little bit different, something new. Good to see you too. I will see all of you in just a little bit.